Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about X-linked genes and their effect on genotypic and phenotypic ratios. And we are going to look at another gene in Drosophila. Now Drosophila is a fruit fly and it's a common model for genetic research. And in my previous video, I had said Drosophila has brick red eyes, and that's useful for when you're talking about pigments in the eye, such as scarlet and brown, and how they come together to give you that, or give us that brown, uh, that brick red eye color. For now, uh, well in this video, we can just refer to the normal eye color as red. Now, there is a gene called the white gene, And you can probably guess when the white gene is mutated, the, the eyes are going to be white. But let's take Drosophila females first. So we will symbolize alleles of the white gene with a W, and we will put a superscript plus to indicate that this W allele is the wild type allele. Two wild type alleles give red eyes. Heterozygous is also red and two W's two mutant alleles gives the white eye now Thomas Morgan is a famous geneticist um, I think he is the first geneticist to win the Nobel Prize so he performed some crosses and and this is back when Scientists had recently rediscovered Mendel's work and figured that, oh, well, Mendel's, you know, postulates kind of agree with the movement of the chromosomes during meiosis. Scientists were starting to see how the chromosomes were moving, and that's when they rediscovered Mendel and said, oh, Mendel's postulates are predicting how the chromosomes are moving. But many scientists weren't convinced that the chromosomes were, were the carriers of genetic information. So... Morgan's experiments were, I guess, the most convincing, or the first, I guess, experiments that convinced nearly all scientists that chromosomes do indeed carry the genetic information. So, Morgan crossed red females with white males in this first cross right here, and what he found was, you know, similar to Mendel, all the offspring had red eyes. So red eyes, red-eyed offspring. Okay, but then he did the reciprocal, reciprocal cross. Reciprocal cross. And what does that mean? So to do a reciprocal cross, you have to have two opposite sexes. You have to be in an organism where there are two different sexes there. And then what you do is you switch the phenotypes. So with the sexes. So in this case, we have a red female. The reciprocal cross would be a white female. So a female with white eyes. Here we have white males. Down here we have red males. Okay, and when he did this cross, he found out that half of the offspring had red eyes and one half had white eyes. And the red-eyed flies were all females, and here's a symbol for female, and the white, so the red-eyed flies were all female and the white-eyed flies were all male. So we had this clear delineation of uh, phenotype with sex. All the females were red eyes, all the males were white eyes. So huge difference here. So this is similar to what Mendel was seeing here. Well, this is not similar. And it's very interesting how the difference uh, occurs when you do the reciprocal cross down here. So what's going on? Eventually, Morgan figured out that, you know, the white gene, this occurs because the white gene is on the X chromosome. And 
Now, sex determination in Drosophila occurs a little differently than it does in humans. In, in humans, the, the Y chromosome determines maleness. In Drosophila, I mean, I haven't studied this in a while, but I believe it's the ratio of autosomes to sex chromosomes that determines um, the sex of the fly. But what still holds is that typically females have two X chromosomes and flies that have one X and one Y are males. So this is similar between uh, females and males in Drosophila and humans. And we will get to sex determination in a future lecture. Yeah, but we will mostly focus on sex determination in humans. So typically, uh, typical standard old Drosophila flies, males are XY, females are XX. So we have this term here, hemizygous. So hemizygous is the condition where you have a diploid organism, but one, uh, one sex, let me see how to word this. So hemizygous, hemizygosity, I should say, occurs in, um, This would be helpful when I, if I should have this definition here. I think I will uh, put the definition in the video here So because I'm kind of butchering this here. Hemizygous means you only have one allele, essentially. So males only have one allele for every gene on the X chromosome. So they can't be homozygous. They can't be heterozygous for genes on the X chromosome because they only have one copy of each gene on the X. So we call them hemizygous for any gene that they only have one copy of. So for any gene on the X, they are hemizygous. For any gene on the Y, they are hemizygous. Okay, so, and I'll put the, um, a clearer definition, a more formal definition of that up on the video. Um, this is a reminder to myself to do that. So, okay, so now that we know how many X chromosomes females have and males have in Drosophila. What we can do is look at Morgan's cross right here where he crossed white females to red males. And this is the genotype of the white females. And this is the genotype of the red males. So notice we only have one allele here. And I find it useful to keep track of the Y chromosome with some symbol, any old symbol. I like to use this. This is what our um, textbook uses. The textbook this course is, is based off of. Some little symbol like this, just to, as a placeholder for the Y chromosome. Why don't we use a Y? Well, we're gonna see another gene called, uh, I think, yellow body which is Y, so that's why we don't use a Y to symbolize the Y chromosome. Now, in this cross, well, what happens? Let's do the Punnett square. Let's do gametes from mom up here, gametes from dad down here, so eggs up here, sperm down here. Some of the sperm just have a Y chromosome, so no white gene. These sperm up here have an X chromosome with a Y plus. So fertilization occurs. And we have our four possibilities. So these flies right here, the genotypes are identical. They're female, right? Because we have two copies of W, which means we have two X chromosomes. But the genotypes are such that they will be red-eyed. So red-eyed females. And this is going to be two-quarter, right? One-quarter, two-quarter. And these genotypes are the same. So we have two-quarter white-eyed males. And we can reduce this. One-half red-eyed females one half white-eyed males. 
Okay, so that's how we get this strange, you know, one half to one half ratio, one to one ratio in the F1 generation when we're crossing these two flies together. And I guess, you know, we're not crossing a homozygote to a homozygote, right? We're crossing a homozygote to a hemizygote. And that's, you know, part of the reason why we get this strange ratio. Um, also, because of the way that the mom here has the recessive alleles uh, for the, the mutant phenotype. Let's take a look at the other one where we don't see the uh, half red-eyed females to half white-eyed males. The reciprocal cross produces all red-eyed flies. Let's just take a look at that. I didn't go over this one in class because I wanted you to, to do it on your own. I'm pretty sure you can probably do it on your own at this point. But I have some time right now, so I will jot this down for the video. So red females cross to white males. Now, we'll assume the females here are homozygous for the wild type allele. The male is hemizygous for the mutant allele. I changed my Y symbol. We'll go with that one. Do the cross, we can set up the Punnett square. Okay, here we go. Now you can see here, these are the females. We see two Ws, that means we have two X chromosomes. So genotype is the same. So one quarter plus one quarter is two quarter, which is one half. One half red eyed females, because the genotype has at least one wild type copy of uh, the W gene. And here we have one half are going to be red eyed males. Okay, one half plus one half, that represents all the flies. Half are males, half are females. They all have red eyes. Okay, so that's how we derive the reciprocal cross um, involving the white gene and red-eyed and white-eyed flies. So that's basically it for X linkage, but that sets us up to go over um, linkage between two genes on the same chromosome, which we will start in the next video.